I'd like to welcome everybody to the uh, June board meeting for the Bowling Green City Schools uh, Board of Education uh, monthly meeting. Uh, Ms. Julie, you can take a Thank you. Joan Mark, here. Norman, here. Tracy Gomez. Jenny Stewart, here. Brian Myers, here. Please stand for the pleasure. I pledge allegiance to the at this time, I'd like to uh, recognize our media partners, Ray Thomas Third from the Center, Jamie Walker from uh, BJ Independent, Clint Corp from the Morning Show, and Lee Hockle from the uh, League of Women So I appreciate you being here. Uh, Okay. We'll go right into item four, uh, special uh, recognition. So this guy here. Kathy, yeah. yeah, you're up. Hey. Turn the microphone on. Turn the microphone on. Just to make it. Oh, well, it is my pleasure to be here again this year for the presentation of the Certificate of Excellence and Recognition of Outstanding Performance in the Food Sanitary and um, Establishments for, sorry, a moment, <laughs> for Outstanding Performance in Food Sanitation and Preparation. These two were one of the 38 establishments to receive the award out of more than 800 food facilities in the Wood County area. These two show dedication to exceptional food safety and sanitation practices, and they meet all the criteria for the Tony Payne Award yet again. We received it like last year and again this year. So I would like to recognize for Kanya Elementary, Ashley Godax. And then for Crim Elementary, we have Julie Boston. Also, Julie's birthday today. Oh, I can grab a quick one. Next, we'll go right into our uh, sports recognition. So, Bowling Green High School uh, track. We'll start with uh, Scott Mongrassi. Oh, um, this year we had three first team NL placers um, at the league championship meet. Um, so, I'll call them up. Cece died, our first one. Um, for our girls team, CT was the first place uh, finisher in, or the new champion in track and field or in shot put. Um, CC is a fantastic competitor. Um, she's a junior, so she's still growing. She, she's still uh, improving. Um, she is very hard on herself, um, but she, at, towards the end of the season, she started to find her groove and really fit um, all the little pieces of throwing shot and throwing discs together. Um, and so she was not only was she the third place finisher in business, but she was also the first place uh, lead champion in track and field. So very that way. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 
and then the other two are here tonight. But Allie Fry um, was the lead champion in the Pacific for our girls team. Um, Allie's also a, a, a major student of Rose. Um, I'm surprised that she's, or she might even be out practicing right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, she puts in a ton of work um, and she's just a fantastic athlete, really dedicated to her craft. Um, and she's a junior as well, but she'll be coming back next year as well. Um, and for the boys team, Caden Shank was the league champion in the 300 meter hurdles, um, which is a you talk to track and field people, and it's one of the most difficult events because it's both technical and you need speed and you need endurance. Um, and so Caden was the uh, was the repeat champion, uh, lead champion in three hundred hurdles. Um, and so it was really fun to watch all three of them really uh, perform well at the lead championship. So, thank you guys. We'll jump ahead a little bit and have Brad Riggs come up to uh, our baseball. Hello, everyone. Um, I have a distinct pleasure to, uh, to honor Brock Hastings, um, who this year was our one of three seniors, and he was uh, not only did he get first team. All lead, you got first team all district. It's pretty pretty big deal to be recognized in both of those areas. First team infield and uh, Brock Brock's been an amazing young man. I wish I could have had him all four years of his high school career between COVID and an injured knee. Um, we only had two years together, but he's been a strong leader to our program, and uh, I'm going to miss him very much and 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 his leadership in our in our clubhouse. So Brock, thank you very much, and uh, I, I just want to give this certificate. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, Michelle Wolf. I have two sports I'm going to recognize. First one I'm going to do is boys tennis. Um, our head coach, Andy Drum, is on vacation with his son, who's being recognized. Um, but he did give me something to read about Matthias, um, who's a senior. Matthias was selected by the other coaches of the NL to be first team all NOL for boys tennis. Matthias and his partner, Theo Bach, selected second team all NOL, were 5 and 2 in NOL play at first doubles this year at Junior. They finished as runners up in the NL tournament to an Anthony Wayne doubles team and beat them three times a season. Matthias and Theo were also runners up in sectionals and lost in the first round of district here. Matthias was also a second team all state for boys soccer this past fall. He is planning to attend the University of Toledo as an undecided major next year and plans to play club tennis and club soccer in Toledo. That's Matthias Rupp. Um, for lacrosse, uh, the first student that we'll recognize is Reed Bratt. Um, who I believe is actually out of town playing lacrosse right now. Uh, Reese is a junior and he is a star textbook Redmond Bobcat yeah, athlete. Is this is Redmond. Wow. That's great. I'm gonna... <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, so Reese is an amazing kid. He spends, he's a free sport athlete, uh, one of our tri cat athletic club members, um, good student, he's a tennis student, and lacrosse wise, he's everything that he wants to be. He'll go anywhere on the field. Um, he's very smart, very polite. His sportsmanship is through the roof. Um, he was a first team NL player this year. Um, a little compliment to him because of him, some of the work he did on the field, not just scoring and assisting most of our goal scorers, uh, but he was a major proponent in our first defeat over Anthony Wayne this year, in the play, uh, which was huge. And then the second one goes to Evan Brandt. Um, Evan is a senior. He's going to continue his athletic career at the University of Indianapolis. Um, he is a record holder at the state level in several categories. Um, he leads the state in most goals scored in a game, which he achieved last year. Um, career all-time goal scorer um, in the state of Ohio. Uh, he's in the 284 range, he sits, um, which beats the second place person by around 30 or 40 goals. Um, he also has multiple scored in a season, which he achieved last year. Um, so there's probably a few other things if we really start taking on dining things. Um, but Evan 
uh, really grew in the past couple of years as a leader on the field um, in his maturity as a player. And, and again, it's just the beginning of the game. So it's a pleasure to uh, recognize these guys. Yeah. Thank you. Next up, we have a special award uh, for, um, to be presented by Lori Brody. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having me this evening. I am here on behalf of State Auditor Faber, and it is a pleasure to be here tonight to present the school district with the Auditor of State Award. And I'd like to point out, I'd like to come in person and point out that it could be a very select group. Our office audits about um, 6,000 entities in the state of Ohio, which is required by law. And they are all types of governments. Basically, anybody who spends taxpayer dollars uh, receives an audit. So cities, villages, counties, and cities all receive audits. Um, and out of those, only about 8% are um, eligible for this award that the state audit puts out. And it is presented when you receive a clean audit opinion. And so of that 8%, I'd like to read this list of what they must achieve. That's a lengthy financial list, but you must um, report to the state auditor's office, um, file a report within 150 days a year end. To have a clean audit, you can have no findings for recovery, material citations, material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, single audit findings, or question costs. You receive a management letter, and that letter can have no comments related to ethics referrals, question costs less than $10,000, lack of time to report submission, reconciliation issues, failure to obtain a timely single audit, findings for recovery less than $100, or any public meeting or public records in action as well. So I like to read that list because it is not a short list. So you must do all of those things. But I do think the award represents the hard work of all the employees, especially in the school district. Um, you know, so many people do so many things in different locations. So I think it takes every employee every day to strive for that fiscal excellence. Um, even if they don't know they're doing it sometimes, um, it takes everybody doing everything, you know, just the craft and asking a question. But I also like to thank the superintendent and the board because I know you're responsible for accounting for every dollar that's spent here in the school district is a big job. But I especially like to thank the treasurer, Kathy, and I thank her staff and everyone who helps her um, because they really have to strive for that fiscal integrity and fiscal excellence to receive the award. So on behalf of State Honor Keith Faber, I'd like to say congratulations and thank you for your hard work. I would just like to echo what Laurie said. It does not come on its own. It's a lot of hard work by a lot of people. So I appreciate all the work that everybody does throughout the district. Get this award. Thank you. Item five, opportunity for public to address the board on agenda items. And the uh, one person. So we have uh, Joseph DeMar. If you could come up and uh, state your address, and then Lori uh, Hurst. Good evening. My name is Joe DeMar. I live at 517 South Main Street here in Bowling Green, Ohio. And I'm addressing agenda item 14 the, uh, the bond for the new high school. And I just want to say at the start that uh, as chair of the Wood County Green Party, uh, our party supports this bond. Uh, we have supported your attempts at passing bonds in the past. Unfortunately, as you're aware, that hasn't succeeded. But I think there's something I'd like to suggest to the board right now that might actually help the bond pass this time. Um, what we're advocating is that the new school be a carbon negative school that it has enough uh, solar power and that's uh, it has geothermal heating it's properly insulated it uses other architectural techniques like uh, orientation of building in relation to the sun in order to produce more energy than it uses and the reason i think this will go over well with the voters and be popular um climate connections just this past week came out with a survey they did 
And many surveys over the years have shown that two thirds of Americans believe in global warming, want something done about it, want changes like this one made. But what this show, what this survey showed is that most Americans also believe that most other Americans are full of global warming deniers. In other words, even though the majority of the people want to change, believe in the problem and want to change, they think other people think it's bad. And so I think that by making this a, a, from the beginning a, a carbon negative school, you will actually get a majority of people responding to requests in a stronger way than just asking for a new school. Uh, and then there's other very practical reasons. One is cost. Uh, carbon negative schools use geothermal heating and cooling, and uh, geothermal units pay for themselves in five to 10 years. They last 20 to 25 years versus 10 to 15 years for normal uh, AC and gas furnaces. And they also have lower maintenance costs. There would be a payback if you had solar panels on the roof. You would lower your electric bills. And uh, you'd also, interestingly, be selling electricity back into the grid during the summer months when you're not using the building as, strong, as uh, intensively and you're producing more electricity than your than your building needs. The Ohio, uh, just this past week, the Ohio State uh, government is passing the budget bill and they slipped into their uh, an, an item that's going to allow gas companies to charge uh, their customers directly for new infrastructure. And it's not clear, but it looks like this, this might not have a, a limit. And so really the only safe way to guard the school district against high gas utility bills in the future is to not need gas. And carbon negative schools, carbon negative buildings don't need gas hookups. That they're, they're all electric and they are protected from increases in prices in gas. And another reason is geothermal schools are more comfortable. Geothermal heating and cooling is quiet. You can have more zones. There's less variation in temperature. It doesn't go as high or as low. And uh, if you've got more insulation, you've got a quiet building. And solar roof panels actually shade the building, which means less AC to be moving. But one of the main reasons we're pushing this and, and urging the board to consider this is that it would also give students at Bowling Green hope. Uh, right now, we are in a climate emergency. And it's kind of ironic that um, at public school is where I learned to read like graphs and charts and things. And I've been reading the graphs and charts over the last few months. And the climate situation is getting much worse, much more quickly than uh, anyone expected. And so if we could show our students the future of the carbon-free future, a school that doesn't put any carbon in the air and actually produces more energy than it uses, I think that will help the attitude of all the students and be part of something bigger, something cooler, and it would help the whole community sort of regain its position as a progressive voice, a progressive community in Ohio. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Item six, board president report. Fairly brief uh, this month. Uh, there have been a small group of BG staff members, including representation of the school board, uh, regularly meeting with DLR Group, which is the, the architectural firm we are collaborating with for a new building project. Uh, the group is working on the needed space in determining the necessary square footage for a building project for a new high school. The conversations have been robust, and there's, there's a lot of excitement being displayed. Uh, we will have very specific information uh, that we will share as plans are further developed over the course of the next few months. Uh, we will share all financial information as well as drawings, mock-ups, and other visuals of what the new building will look like and how it will, it will be used. Our goal is to allow voters to see exact, exactly the what, where, and why how this project will benefit students, staff, and the community. And this concludes my present report. Item seven, superintendent report. Hey, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, since our last meeting in May, a lot has gone on. It seems so long since we've had a meeting, but um, summer projects are moving along uh, pretty well. Uh, Chuck's here tonight. And 
We've got the lights in the parking lot that we're taken care of along the sidewalks. That's a big, big plus. Our secretary stations that were damaged during the flood um, over Christmas have been replaced. Uh, the carpet that was damaged in those offices has been replaced as, as well. And our custodial staff continues to work really hard um, to get these folks ready. It's hard to believe that this Saturday is July and five weeks from yesterday, we'll, we'll start back with the first day of football practice and cheerleading and all, all sports. So it's hard to believe that it's almost over. Um, it seems that uh, it was just yesterday graduation. And I want to congratulate Dan and uh, Katie on another great graduation ceremony at the Stroke Fair. Um, over 200 students walked across the stage that day. Um, our new website, our new district website is active and very inviting, much easier to navigate than the previous website. I want to thank Beth Brohack and the technology department for the efforts in making that transition. If you haven't been on our new website, it's worth a look and it's much more uh, appealing to the eye. Um, we got great news last week about our spring test scores. Uh, the increase is a wonderful testament to all the hard work that our pre-K-3 team has done in the area of reading for students. And I want to thank the teachers and Mrs. Angie Shaw for their efforts as we continue our district work with the science of reading. We're excited to see where it takes all of our students, PK to 12. Our work's challenging, but the benefits of student, uh, students reading at proficiency proficient levels as well above the state average, and that's 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 meant in itself. The work being done is, is where the governor is trying to lead the state and why he visited our district to see the work in action, as we mentioned in the last superintendent report. Uh, Angie will be updating the board and presenting next month um, if we have a meeting in July or in August. And finally, I'd like to introduce Athletic Director Michelle Wolf and second grade teacher Stacey Higgins and have them speak about the second and seventh program that they kicked off this year. So we'll turn it over to you, Bob. Thank you, Mr. Thank you for welcoming us. So, um, Mrs. Wolf and I are really proud of a program that we started here in our own school this past year. Some of you might be aware of the Second and Seventh Foundation. Go ahead. Um, it is a group that was started by a group of Ohio State athletes. You might recognize the names Luke Fickle, Brian Miller, and Mike Rabel. They started this foundation probably about 10, I don't know, more than that, 1999. Um, and some of our buildings have been involved pretty sporadically with teams from BGSU over the years with this program. And then COVID came and all those kinds of collaborations shut down. I became aware that they were then opening this up to high school themselves instead of college athlete. Approached Mrs. Wolf last year and we were able to get the program off the ground. It's designed for buildings that have high socioeconomic needs. And both Crim and Kenwood qualified for that, but because our district is small enough, the corporation did allow us to incorporate Kamiya into our program as well. So all of our second grades across the district were included. The program provides these books, which Kala, who's one of our volunteers for the program, is going to bring them up to the board members to see. The books that the program uses are called the Hog Model Series. Now, anybody of you know what a Hog Model is? football coaches. A hog molly is an oversized offensive line, but they took that name and created this series of books that highlights um, social emotional skills for students. Things like responsibility and respect that we try and target through our um, PBIS program in the district, as well as other themes such as diversity and leadership and making healthy choices. Each book focuses on a specific theme. And when the students come, the athletes come to the building, each student gets a copy of this book. So what happens is the student athletes are recruited by Mrs. Wolf. She focused primarily on captains this year. Put it out there, we always had enough volunteers able to come to visit each of the classes, second grade classes, which was amazing. Um, hopefully they practice the book a little bit before they try and read it to the kids. 
They read it to the students. There's some activities, as you can see in the books, um, a little pledge reminding them about qualities of good students, qualities of being a good citizen. They talk about the meaning of the book and then do a short activity. Um, a few of the books tied in very nicely community-wise for us this year, too. Um, one of them focused on the library. So Maria Simone provided some excellent resources for families on getting their own library cards. We also had a book that focused on um, the uh, aquarium. And those of you may know that this is the 60th anniversary of the aquarium at BGSU. And so we were able to get a nice little tie in to encourage students to go visit that as well. Um, the second graders love it when our high school athletes come. Um, they just are so excited to see the future. So we'll take a look at the next page. These are some testimonials that the high school students provided to us. We asked their opinions in the spring about how things went. Um, Hal, if you want to. Come up and talk a little bit about what you have to say. <laughs> but the first person is mine. So I said that the best part is getting to talk about the sports that we do and hear the kids talk about how they wanted to be like us. And it gave me the drive to keep going. So it's just a good experience to have, and especially if you're having like a hard time with your coach, you're just not having fun, but then you go and see all the little kids. Who they're telling you about how they want to be just like you and make some more fun for you and just fun. And I know I was the little second grader who wanted to be a cheerleader and I am a cheerleader. <laughs> Thank you. So our high school athletes enjoyed this just as much as the students did. And on the next slide, you can see their suggestions are they want to be out in the schools even more. Um, we, we received four books this year, so we made four visits. Um, they encouraged us to try to be a monthly program and provide some online tools, but I think we all are <coughs> enough with online anything. So trying to stick with just the, the in-person visits with the paper books, um, but trying to get them even more activities into the schools. The more that we can do that, the better. Um, as a teacher, we really liked having those, those athletes come back into our buildings Kisha, you're a second grade teacher. Did you feel this was successful for you guys at Kenwood as well? Absolutely. My favorite part was seeing my former kiddos come back into my classroom and I can So yeah. my broad based game who was here tonight. He was one of the volunteers that came. Um, both of my daughters were there. There you see Kayla reading at the end of the year. Um, we just really think that this is a program that we want to try and nurture and continue. It's at no cost to us. The Second and Seven Foundation provides these books. We just have to apply each year, which was a pretty easy prospect. She has to agree to it. I agree to serve as site coordinator, and we just make it work. So thank you for allowing us to talk about this exciting opportunity for our kids. Oh, I'll add a couple other snippets. Um, of the students we recognized, the athletes we recognized at the beginning of the meeting, all but two were readers for me multiple times. Um, I think each day we sent anywhere from 20 to 24 kids. Um, the coolest part about it is it did focus on our varsity captains, so they're mostly seniors um, and a lot of juniors. So it's important that they could drive um, because <laughs> we're looking at three locations at the same time, and uh, I don't have my CDL, so we're <laughs> um, but. Um, so all of these kids, actually, most of them didn't have a last grade class, so they weren't using this as a vehicle to get out of class. Um, this was time where they actually got to go home for a little bit before they went to practice or got to get on a bus for a game. Uh, so that was pretty neat for me. Um, I did actually get a little bit of a testimonial from a set of parents uh, who had a senior senior boy who was you know, very outlandish and uh, very confident in himself, but uh, one night they heard him talking in his room and they were kind of like, who's he talking to? And these kids don't talk on the phone anymore. Um, <laughs> and so they went up there and I think he's reading and they realized he was reading a children's book and I'm like, what are you doing? And he saw it was all took up because he was practicing to read this book the next day. Um, so I thought that was a pretty cute thing. Um, and they're all so nervous. Um, again, very confident kids, all athletes who put themselves out there every single week. Um, to, usually for the better, but if you take a lot of criticism um, and going into second grade classrooms, you think that 
we put them on a stage in front of 10,000 people. Um, but it was very rewarding for them. Um, I, Stacy did all the work. I just got the right kids and, and sent them along. Um, but it was a program we're looking forward to this year. Item eight, opportunity for the board to present additional items. I'll open this up to my fellow board members. Well, I can't go a board meeting without reminding the community that um, our Bobcat Basics is still in existence. And throughout the summer, if you would um, be willing to um, help us start stocking our Bobcat Basics, it would be great with um, wrapped food snacks, um, be careful not to include any type of nuts in the snacks with the fall and winter coming on. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but it is. Once we get back in September, we will be needing knit hats and gloves and socks and sweaters, um, all the things we typically ask for, including bottled water. So um, I would just like the community to um, think about as the summer goes on, when you're in a big store and you can buy things in bulk, you think about our Bobcat Basics. And Bobcat Basics provides these items for all of the schools in the districts. It's not just for the middle school. And bless you. And it's very, very, very much appreciated. So, and the need is still great. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, so we go to item nine, correction and for approval of the minutes of the special meetings of May 1st, 3rd, 10th, 18th, and 30th, 2023, and the regular meeting of May 16th, 2023. I have a motion to approve. Second. Yeah. Hearing none, please say roll. John Clark? Yes. Jenny Stewart? Yes. Norman Gear? Yes. Ryan Myers? Yes. Item 10, listing of expenditures and investments made through May 1st through May 31st, 2023, then in now payments in the treasurer's monthly report. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Can I make an addition to that? Does the link go through June 30th? May 1st through June 30th? Is it typical year? I don't know. Sure. Will be the listing of expenditures and investments made through May 1st through June 30th, 2023. We have a, uh, so a motion. A second. Or second. Give me a second. 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 Right. Take a roll, please. Jenny Stewart. Yes. Norman Gear. Yes. Jill Carr. Yes. Brian Myers. Yes. Motion passes. Item 11 personnel. Okay, here we go. Okay, under certificate personnel, we have uh, extended time to 23 24 school year for library media and school psychologists. The dates listed there. We also, under number two, we're sending extended time to 23 24 school psychologists. Um, with that was approved May 16th, Board of Education meeting. The employee resigned effective August 3rd. That's approved on the 30th of station. Item three is employment 2324. Uh, as listed there, item 4A, 1 through 21, which takes us to page six, are all related to professional. I'm sorry. A1 through 21 are, I got ahead of myself, are employment, and that takes us to page three. Sorry. Um, number five, we have a third grade reading guarantee. Uh, with the times listed, uh, the tutor rate, and the person that is being recommended there. We have number six, we send the transfer from unclassified one personnel uh, to remain coordinator of community outreach and student wellness position for 2024 school year. Now we're talking about items 7A through Q, which takes us to page six, and those are all summer professional development. Uh, opportunities with the employees listed and the dates and the funds uh, from where the funds are being taken. So um, those are all listed on the agenda. Uh, item B under support personnel, we have four resignations, uh, a food service monitor, 
Matt Kenwood, substitute bus driver, uh, Secretary of Legal Services, and being the Secretary of High School. Item two is an appointment of five individuals, uh, Secretary for Humans of the High School, the Secretary of Pupil Services, a van driver, transportation, another van driver, the transportation with the effective date, and experience levels, and then finally, custodian second shift at the high school. Item three is transportation substitute 22 23 school year, 1764 regular round, 1734 extra trip. And that's effective uh, June 1st, and the hours should be determined by the director of transportation. Uh, number four is the transfer of promotion. We have secretary that was at Kenwood, uh, transferring to the high school uh, with the contract dates being changed from 212 to 253, with this continued uh, day work probationary period. And that's effective July 17th. We have a secretary uh, that was part time at Criminal Elementary moving to the secretary position at Kenwood full time. And again, that's 60 workday probationary period. That's effective August 1st. Item 5 is the leave of absence request uh, from July 10th to July 28th of 2023. And that's extended leave without pay. And it's 15 days. Six, the employment of substitute bus driver trainees for the 22 23 school year, 10 10 per hour. Hours to be determined by the transportation director with the effective wage for each of those employees. Letter C, other personnel, student activity contracts, uh, the employment of waiver supervisor for the summer, uh, with the rate that's being paid, and that's contingent upon completion of the supplemental contract. Item two uh, is the student activity contracts for 23 24. Uh, school year occasion employees in paid contractual positions contingent upon completion of all training requirements. And that's items A, 1 through 27. Number three is volunteer recognition for the 23 24 school year. Those are unpaid positions. There are three. Item four, remedial tutors for the 23 24 school year. Contracted tutor rate, and there are three remedial tutors uh, one at the high school, two in the middle. Unclassified one personnel, uh, the employment of the coordinator of community, uh, community outreach and student wellness, 205 day contract for the 23 24 school year, and those that contracts being paid from wellness funds. The next two um, are a replacement of Jody Anderson's curriculum coordinator position. And this is the first official hire of Dr. Hazelman. Um, I thought it was important that uh, Dr. Hazelman was part of this uh, hire since it's part of the administrative uh, cabinet team. And so he is uh, we're recommending Katie Perkins effective August 1st through July 31 of 2025. And that's 225 day contract. Uh, being paid at 88,000 July 1, 2023 through July 31st. We have the 10 days of per diem, 391.11. Uh, next person is the assistant treasurer. I cannot speak and I would have to defer to Mrs. Schuler as I'm not part of the interview process or the contract process of the treasurer's department. So but that is the recommendation for that person and 253 day contract. And the base salary of 82,000 that blocks first. Um, item B e, is administrative personnel. We have uh, extended time for athletic director Michelle Wolf up to five days at per diem rate. And then, unfortunately, I have to uh, accept or ask the board to accept the resignation of our assistant principal Katie Bacon at the high school effective on the 2nd of 2023. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Yes, second. So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Discussion. I want to thank Katie for her work a uh, few years. Um, I would like to recommend that she not accept it, but I don't know. <laughs> she's already been board approved at Paris Bird. We wish her well and she's done a good job and she'll do great things. I don't want to make you cry anymore, Katie, but I will miss you. Katie and I have had the opportunity to work together on some fun things, and you've just been excellent 
Um, you're caring, you care about the kids, you're intentional, and understand why you're leaving, and I'm sorry that you're leaving, and I do wish you very much success in your position. They are very lucky to have you. Any other discussion? Thank you, Kate. Appreciate it. Ms. <clears throat> Shuler, you take the roll? Norman Gear? Yes. Denise Stewart? Yes. Jill Carr? Yes. Brian Myers? Yes. Uh, item 12, operations. Sure. Thank you. <clears throat> item number one is the authorization of temporary appropriations for fiscal year 24 at 50% of the 2023 appropriation levels that helps us get the year started. Item number two are fiscal year 23 appropriation and amendments, um, additions and decreases as presented. In the general fund, we had a gifted carryover that we needed to spend. The mentor grant was received through the Wood County ESC, which class of 23 had a class gift to purchase. DECA had some trip reimbursements. After prom had some payments needed from the recent prom that took place. And Title IIA had an allocation adjustment. Cash transfers, um, the high school requested that we open a an account, which you'll see in the next batch of items um, for the AP exams and PSAT tests. So we request a cash transfer of $3,562 from the high school principal fund to the AP exam and PSAT fund. They also request a transfer from the Latino Culture Club to the Spanish Club in the amount of $33.42. Cash advances. And these will be paid back when the new fiscal year opens. We are requesting an advance of $90,707.45 from the general fund to the auxiliary contract services fund, and an advance in the amount of $134,802.41 from the general fund to the school safety grant fund. Both of those will be reimbursed. Item number three is the recommendation to approve the established funds with the purposes listed below. The first one is the Patrick Maluka Memorial Scholarship Fund being established by his grandparents for the purpose of um, using it for donations and awards, food scholarship to an eligible senior pursuing higher education in the fields of dance, music, and drama. <laughs> The next fund is the AP exam and PSAT fund that we just talked about. Um, and the 200-1045 is the High School Gay Straight Alliance Fund. The purpose is as, as a student-led organization at BG High School with the intended purpose, providing a safe and supportive environment for all students. The account will be used for fundraising efforts in order to provide supplies and snacks for those meetings. So 300-2010 Middle School Drum Club Fund will be established to account for monies received and expense for a drum program for middle school. It would be a district management activity and would include student drum plays with both acting and technical aspects. Fundraisers will support the cost of those activities. Fund 499 is an Ohio Attorney General fiscal year 23 school safety grant that we just received. And that fund has been established to expenditures. Item number four is the approval of a cyber and pollution coverage through the Ohio School Plan. The total premium amount is $13,693. And I want to note that um, that premium was actually a little bit lower mainly because of the security efforts that have taken place in the tech department. That's all I have. Thank you. Great. Under uh, <clears throat> item one, who would fall into agreements, we ask for the acceptance of the personal service contract with Montgomery Alexander and Associates LLC in the Bowling Green City School District for instructing and assessment for special needs students Effective June 1st of 2023 through August 1st of 2023. That's exhibit two. 
the acceptance of the agreement to provide the Education Service Center of Central Ohio and Bowling Green City Schools for consultation with the Ohio Center for Autism and Low Incidence for Environmental Design with our Learning Center Programming in August 2023 at a cost of $2,750 to be paid with IDA art funds, exhibit three. <clears throat> Item 1C, the acceptance of the agreement to provide, again, the Education Service Center of Central Ohio on behalf of the Ohio Center of Autism and Low Incidence, for Cali, and the Bowling Green City Schools for consultation and coaching to support students with complex needs effective August 1st of 2023 through June 30th of 2024, not to exceed $6,000 to be paid from the special education budget exhibit four. Item 1D is the acceptance of the agreement between the Child Resource Center or CRC and the Bowling Green City Schools for school-based mental health services for all children, elementary through high school for the 23.4 school year, July 1 of 2023 through June 30th of 2024, and has paid for student wellness and success funds this school year 2020 until funds are exhausted, exhibit five. Uh, one E is the acceptance of service agreement between Wood County Education Service Center and Bowling Green City School District for preschool play based assessment, physical therapy services, instructor Josie Rowe for the 2022 23 extended school year, occupational therapy services, uh, instructor Joy um, Mujeroni and Robin Scharninghouse. Sh for the 2223 extended school year, speech pathology services instructor Donnell Dippenthaler for the 2223 extended school year, estimated $6,994. Exhibit six. Item F is the acceptance of agreement, client services between Rachel Wixie and Associates LLC and the Bowling Green City Schools, professional services associated with improvement, training, scheduling, employment, and other human resource services for substitute teacher provisions. Effective August 14, 2023 through June 30th of 2024, with an automatic renewal. That's exhibit seven. Item 1G is the Northwest Ohio Area Computer Services Cooperative Computer Service Agreement for July 1 of 2023 through June 30th of 2026, exhibit 15. Item two, approval resolution and the resolution intent not to provide career tech ed in grades seven and eight in this annual uh, renewal. Uh, and that's exhibit eight. And then the following gifts uh, to be accepted $200 to the Rex Memorial Scholarship from Howie B. Um, $1,000 for the One Book BG Allen and Mary Green. $30 inspirational educator. That's from Kenwood Elementary PTO. $180 to the Happy Camper Award in Conneaut Elementary, Jeff Johnson. $2,000 BGCS Lunch Program, the Hockle Family of Bowling Green, Ohio. And again, $500 from One Book BG, the Hockle Family of Bowling Green, Ohio. $100 from G Bobcat Basics, Fight and Walter Family. School supplies valued at $150 from Kenwood Elementary Sherry Sparkton family. School supplies via Staples, a donation kit, fundraiser valued at $270 to the Bowling Green City Schools from Staples, Eric Davis Smith, and Manager Justin Jones. And finally, books and buckets valued at $150 from Elementary from Kristen Delay. And that's a total of $4,440 this month. Item four is the review and accept 2023 handbooks as presented to the board, elementary student handbook, parent handbook for BG Preschool, the Bowling Green City School of Athletic Handbook, Middle School Athletic Handbook, and the one to one Chromebook Handbook. Copies will be available at the superintendent's office after approval, and the handbooks will be posted in, on the BG School website and copies available in each individual building. Exhibit nine. Item five is a review and adoption of the following revised replacement policies, 7540.03, follows the use policy for technology and network use to exhibit 10. Item six is the approval of lunch price increase in Bowling Green City Schools to begin the 23 24 school year for Senate Bill 210. 
Uh, the increase is 50 cents uh, for elementary student breakfast, adult breakfast, and adult lunches, 25 cents for student elementary student lunch and middle school student lunch, with the totals there for their overall cost of food. Item seven is the adoption of district's confirmation from the Director of Food Service and Compliance with Senate Bill 210, certification of standards governing types of foods and beverages sold on school premises, Exhibit 11. And finally, the approval that the payment of the grievance settlement, grievance settlement uh, as approved at the February 21st, 2023 board meeting will be paid from Title 2A funds that had been previously approved, but we wanted to make certain that it was known where the funds would be able to pay for. A motion to approve. So moved. Second. Discussion. First, uh, I would like to say that item F, the change with Rachel Wixie, that's essentially what we've done is essentially save the district uh, some money by taking uh, the middleman or the Wood County ESC out of that process. So anybody looking to apply for substitute teaching we go directly to the Rachel Wixie, not the ESC, to Rachel Wixie, to us. So it takes that middle man out and saves us money. And I'd also like to thank the Hockle family for their generosity as we is here tonight and all the, the individuals that have donated to the schools and, and make Bowling Green a special place uh, with the support that we see in the community. Thank you. Any questions? I'd like to say thank you to everyone that's took place in getting staff, whether that's interviewing or going through the process of living off the massive list um, of staffing. And so I know how involved that is with your time. So everyone who's involved with that, thank you. Hearing nothing else, would you take a roll, please? Jill Carr? Yes. Norman here? Yes. Jamie Stewart? Yes. Ryan Myers? Yes. Number nine on that resolution or ratifying action statement to uh, contract with DLR group uh, for the facilities master plan project and approval of the facilities master plan project. Amendment number one the consultant agreement for master planning services. So Second. Any discussion? Jenny Jenny Stewart? Yes. Norman Beer? Yes. Jill Carr? Yes. Ryan Myers? Yes. Item 13, adopt resolution declaring the necessity of bond issue in the amount of $72,800,000 um, and to submit the question of such bond issue to the electors. So we'll move. Second. Any questions or discussion regarding it? Ms. Schuller, could you maybe explain? Yeah, with this a little bit more. Yes. Um, when you proceed with the bond project or capital improvement project, there's two resolutions. This is the first one declaring the necessity. Next one will come soon. This is the amount that you approve tonight will go to the county auditor. And you will have to certify that amount to um, put together the ballot language that will be on ballot when they go to the voters. It does help. I'm glad you explained it because I wasn't going to explain it. Please take a roll. Marvin Gear? Yes. Jimmy Stewart? Yes. Jill Carr? Yes. Brian Myers? Yes. I am 14. Adopt a resolution requesting state uh, consents to issue bonds of the school district in an amount not to exceed $72,800,000 and submit the question of such bond issue to the electors. Second. Any questions or discussions? Here we go. You say go. Norman here. Here. Jimmy yes. Stewart. Oh, yes. Jimmy Stewart. Yes. No car. Yes. Brian Myers. Yes. Motion passes. 
Item 15, opportunity for public and for board to present additional items. We do have one person that uh, planned up to speak, and then Jeff Nichols. It'll take me years to get over there, but I will. <laughs> Jeff Nichols, 1325 Thomas Savoy, Boy, Green, Ohio. Uh, I come to you tonight to speak as the BGEA president. Um, I also am the original hog mommy, too. So I'm glad I got brought up today. Um, teachers sometimes create lesson plans and even pastors sometimes create sermons for people to hear and then we get up to stay our lesson that day and a couple of the students that we wanted to hear it aren't there. So here's my lesson plan for today. As we move into the new era of Dr. Hazelman, Hazelman leading our district, who I believe is a wise choice. I've met with him a couple of times and we'll meet a couple of times after in the summer. And I'm looking forward to working with him. I think he's going to be a great leader. But I would implore the Board of Education to continue the support that you give our superintendent, the guidance you give our superintendent. But I also would uh, warn that the sometimes need to micromanage by some people um, should be avoided as we go into our next administration. Um, and, and that's really all I want to say about that because I think it's unfair to talk sometimes when you shouldn't. But I appreciate everything you have done, and I just implore you to go into the, the next hire with an open mind. You listen to all these positive things that are going on in this district, and we want to continue them. And I know the four of you want to, too. Um, I also want to say, because I don't know if we'll have a meeting in July or not, um, it has been my pleasure in 32 years to work with six different superintendents. And this superintendent and I, as well as all of us in this room, have been through a time in our lives that we had never had to face before. And decisions that we had to make were difficult. And I I'd like to say publicly that even in all of those meetings back door and in closing, where he and I may not have seen eye to eye. He listened. And he had one thing in mind the protection, safety, and care of our students and our faculty. And I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget him. He is a quality leader, a quality man. And as much as I look forward to working with Dr. Hazelman as your next choice, I will always cherish the time that I worked with Mr. Shreve. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I think we have a motion to go into the executive session tonight. Um, so there's nothing else. Uh, the last. Um, Item on the agenda would be item 12, the adjournment. <laughs> and I would second. second. Take the roll. Thank you, Stewart. Yes. Um, Jill Carr. Yes. Norman here. Yeah. Brian Myers. Yes. Oh. Thank you. Thank you.